As we move into 2022, it's hard to imagine that even in this era of boxy, cardboard cutout locomotive designs, you can still find a lot of unique personality on today's railroads, even the Class 1s. In the last video of this series, we talked about the tunnel motor variants of the ST40 and ST45-2 EMD models. Local area rail fans may be shocked to learn that in addition to the eclectic mix of early diesels on their roster, the Reading and Northern had at least one tunnel motor as evidenced by the 8354 shown in Pittston Yard in the early 2000s. Just check out the reporting marks stenciled above the air intake. With the increased cost and complexity of new locomotives, many railroads are finding a renewed appetite and enthusiasm for rebuilding, upgrading, and modernization new programs for older power. And as PSR continues to take hold on the big class ones, traditional business operating models are being mothballed as diesel locomotive builders team up with railroad shops and contract shops in the reincarnation and reviving of motor power makeovers to firm new levels. It would seem that for the first time, a new era in the production of diesel locomotives has begun, where upgrades and new locomotive sales are considered pretty much on equal footing. From the relatively simple but effective Dash 3 upgrades such as those found on the CSX to the more complicated DC to AC conversions to EMD Eco repowering packages and even the past AC refreshing programs for the SD70 Max, SD90 Max, even the GE AC 4400s, rebuilding has become the latest fashion in modern day railroading. By far, the clear champion in motor power modernity is the Norfolk Southern. With the Juniata shops that it inherited from Conrail, NS maintains a long-standing practice of conducting in-house locomotive remanufacturing programs. The shops at Juniata ranks as one of the most productive locomotive shops in the world. In these historic halls, generations of workers of the PRR once built and rebuilt everything from the tiniest O4Os to the mightiest K4 Pacifics. J1 Class 2104s and Duplex Drive 4464Q2s and 44. 44T1s, not to mention the GG1 electrics. NS employees uphold the age-hold traditions of transforming tired and worn-out SWs, Jeeps, the big SDs, and even GEs into better-than-new locomotives. Just two years ago, the Norfolk Southern had a wide variety of SD40-2s from all over the place on its roster of just under 4,000 locomotives. In fact, if you remember, I pointed out in video T167 that one-eighth of the entire NS diesel locomotive roster was SD40-2s at the time. With all of the talk that we've done about the big six-axle road locomotives, it can't be forgotten that the trend toward locomotive modernization began with the four-axle Jeeps, which included some of the oldest power in North America. And even with PSR and changes in operating philosophy, the cannibalization of some routes and the consolidation and downsizing of many secondary fleets, Class 1 railroads still operate some 7,000 EMD Jeeps and SDs. Four- and six-axle road switchers remain the backbone of secondary fleets, and to capitalize on this market, builders like Rail Power, NREC, and Motive Power have also been modernizing older EMDs, along with EMD itself, who in 2010 re-entered the fray with its 710 Eco Repowered Diesel line. Canadian Pacific took the Eco program very seriously, but also had to face some hard facts about its GP7 and GP9 fleet. Despite significant upgrades made in the 1980s, the fleet, originally from the 1950s, had reached a critical point in their lives. And given that they represented 11% of CP's power and operated system-wide, there was no way the endearing EMDs could be ignored. Progress Rail came in with a solution, the GP20C-ECO. Taking the Jeeps in trade and salvaging key components to meet EPA rules, the GP20C-ECO offered up a new road switcher design complete with an 8-cylinder 710 engine that was rated at 2,000 horsepower. Existing trucks and some other components were kept. However, the GP20 model featured a new underframe, operator cabs, and hood. CP initially rebuilt 30 units in 2012 through 2013, but quickly returned for 100 more over the course of two years and in one swift stroke. Approximately 130 GP20 C-Ecos replaced CP's entire fleet of first-generation Jeeps. Now that's what I call progress. And CP's eco ambitions didn't stop there. The railway contracted Progress Rail yet again, this time to rebuild 20 retired SD40-2s as the SD30 C-Eco. 
At the Mayfield, Kentucky facility, the locomotives were stripped down to the frame and rebuilt with a 12-cylinder 710 engine. New crash-worthy cab and microprocessor controls with an upgraded cooling system complete with larger flared radiators akin to the legendary SD45 of the 1960s. Moving our way to the south, even CSX dabbled in the Ecos products game with the SD33 Ecos. Also rebuilt from SD40-2 cores, the units were delivered in 2017. Designated as the SD40E3, changes in CSX management a la 1E Hunter Harrison stalled and maybe stopped any further rebuilds and upgrades from being completed. Of course, not every railroad can justify the money to fully ecoize their fleets. For those who can't or won't, a variety of solutions still remain. The most common one is the traditional overhaul of Jeeps and SDs, which extends their lives. Most secondary fleets only run a fraction of the mileage and megawatt hours of the road units, so diesels upgraded and overhauled for this purpose will be ready for another generation of service. During August of 2017, the Juniata shops completed the SD33 Eco number 6215, the sixth rebuild of an SD40, SD40-2 into this new NS model. The 6215 began its career in 1968 as Kansas City Southern number 620 and was one of 10 former KCS SD40s acquired by Conrail in 1993 from Packrail leasing for a Dash 2 rebuilding program. Upon completion, it became Conrail number 6970 and later NS number 3431. The five prior SD33 Eco units, number 6210 through 6214, were completed in 2016. Along with the other Eco units, the 6215 has the two-tone green band added to the standard NS colors. The first five worked at Macon, Georgia's Brosnan Yard with the 6215 eventually being assigned to Atlanta. These engines have been called Eco locomotives because they are designed with operating efficiencies that reduce emissions and fuel consumption. The 3,000 horsepower engines are Tier 3 compliant. Utilizing GP38 ACs, GP50s, and GP59s as core locomotives, Juniata turned out fleets of GP22s, GP33s, and GP59 Ecos. Outfitted with the NS Design Crescent cabs and upgraded with split cooling systems and new microprocessor controls, Juniata has churned out well over 130 SD60Es that were built from the cores of SD60s. There is a group of 24 units that were acquired from National Railway Equipment by NS in 2012 that have black number boards with white lettering instead of the usual white number boards with black lettering that are common to NS locomotives. The units number 3468 through 3491 had their number boards replaced by NRE with their new NS numbers prior to being delivered resulting in the color reversal. Ex-Norfolk and Western, now Norfolk Southern SD40-2 number 6205 is one of a handful of ex-NNW SDs that have zebra stripes on the front and rear plow. Shown mingling in a Nola yard in a cluster of NS diesels and again in Allentown with the zebra stripes in full view, it's one of a handful of ex-NNW SD40s that are primarily used in switching and hump yard service around the NS system. Over on the NSDNH Sunbury line, there's a small group of locomotives that have been given a heritage status that's unique to this historical railroad. I call them the DNH class. And although the DNH is no longer with us in northeastern Pennsylvania, for a time afterward its memory and legacy lived on in a handful of black and white diesels with decals that paid tribute to the past. Unfortunately, the DNH class SD40-2s were also part of the Blackboard Brigade, and all, if not most, were retired in 2020. During the mid-1980s, Guilford's gray locomotives were an everyday sight in northeastern Pennsylvania. In 1984, the Delaware and Hudson became a part of the Guilford Transportation Company, and the DNH's history as an independent railroad ended. Guilford operated the DNH until about 1988 when it placed it into bankruptcy and limbo until the Canadian Pacific bought it in 1991. The three locomotives in this picture are all dead in tow. The train is being powered by two closely related EMD SD70 ACEs, numbers 1077 and 1090. The center of our attention is the beleaguered and battle squad Boston and Main GP40. It was built in December of 1968 as the Penn Central number 3236 and was transferred to Conrail as the same road number before becoming the Boston and Main number 3236, the Springfield Terminal number 340, and the Boston and Main number 340. 
Guilford Transportation Industries became Pan Am Railways, and blue Pan Am locomotives were common on this train and its sister train, the 11R slash 11Z, from the time that NS took over the line in 2015 to about mid to late 2016. After that, Pan Am locomotives became sporadic and rare, but did show up occasionally, even on the 36T, 37T Allentown and Buffalo bound trains. In other news about this particular train, it ran into trouble 19 miles up the line at milepost 652 around Factoryville. After the lead engine shut down at least two times, it was isolated and the 3604 was put on line and the trailing 1090 and 3604 had to limp the train into Binghamton, New York. Main Central number 509 that I caught here on March 30, 2016 is the former Canadian National GP40-2 LW number 9641 that was built 40 years to the month that I caught it in March of 1976. When it comes right down to it, railroading in the 21st century is a mixed up mad world of overhauls, modernization programs, and motive power makeovers. Old DCs are going AC, rehabilitated Macs are back in service and better than ever. Best of all, timeless EMD Jeeps and SDs continued to carry on. The SD40 locomotive and its many variants was the pinnacle of EMD's domination of the diesel locomotive market of the 1960s, the 1970s, and part of the 1980s. The downward spiral began with the SD50 and from which EMD has yet to recover. The SD40-2 was, and in still many ways, is the gold star standard of what a diesel locomotive should be. And at half a century old, at least double the expected lifespan of a locomotive today, they've never looked better, sounded better, or performed better. Whether in yard service, local service, or plying the mainline high iron. Here's to you, the EMD SD40-2, the greatest diesel electric locomotive of all time. For Trains 21, call me AC.